Chris Jones with us, though. Uh, they done the review. Wayne Pivak out. Uh, not unexpected. No, no real great surprise from what you said yesterday, CJ. Uh, well, no, it's just a nice early Christmas present, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, Father Christmas is coming back with his bag full of Six Nations titles and Grand Slams and how we've missed him. And I'm sure he's missed us because, uh, you know, when you are revered as he is in Wales, uh, it must be hard to live your life uh, able to go down the shops without somebody stopping you and telling you how fantastic you are. Well, so, you know, it's second time around, though. I mean, you know, you've got, you've done it. I mean, what more can he possibly do? I mean, he could win a World Cup, I suppose, but that's unlikely with this Welsh side. I mean, you know, what what is his motivation? Well, look, you say he admits, you know, if if you flop and fail, then you're under no illusions, you know, your your legacy is is damaged. And in that sense, it is a it is a big call for him. Yeah, he could have hung around a bit longer and to see how uh, tomorrow's uh, decision about uh, Eddie Jones goes with England. But he was made an offer he felt he couldn't refuse because, as we understand it. He'll stay there till 2027, but probably move up into a director of rugby type of role after this World Cup. And I think he, he can see that there are so many inherent problems in Welsh rugby, and he does know it well now for the time he spent here already, that he thinks he can help shape uh, the sport in Wales into something approaching a workable business, which at the moment it's not. Although just doing Gatlin things, just by signing the deal... The clubs have, at the same time, all agreed central funding, which has been going on for months and months and months. But the arrival of Warren, they've even sorted that out. Chris Jones, Times Times Online, rugbypass.com. Only 13 of 34 tests, one under Wayne Pivak. He only won three of, what, 14 this year. It all seems so rosy when he squared it in South Africa. I mean, at that stage, was was anyone thinking that this was about to happen? Uh no, not really. Look, but when you lose at home to Italy, it does sort of put you on the back foot. And then if you're going to compound it by losing at home to Georgia from tier two, then you really are in a sticky situation. And, and, and to compound the whole thing, you play Australia's third team, take a big lead and then throw it away. Uh, it, it was just obvious that things had turned against him. And the question is, who could they get to take over? And uh, who was doing the uh, the post-match comments at the side of the pitch but Warren Gatland. And so it was very hard for the Welsh Rugby Union to ignore the love tumbling down from the stands uh, towards Warren uh, because there was an obvious answer to their problem. I mean, Wayne has done a really, really good job off the pitch. He's been incredibly successful. He's done an awful lot of stuff behind the scenes. He's been a lovely bloke, and as you know, he is a lovely bloke, but I'm afraid the team didn't play for him at the crucial times. They stopped playing, and this is the great conundrum going on. You know, They could play for 40, 50 minutes and then just stop and concede ridiculous points. And you know, going to a World Cup, you can't have a team doing that when they are arguably in the toughest group. Chris, so, you know, the, the, I'm just reading from the CEO here. He says, look, he's undoubtedly going to be able to make an immediate impact just as he did when he joined us for the first time in 2008. And then he goes on to say, uh, we're particularly pleased to have been able to secure his services for the next year, a few years, with the ability to go to the 2027 World Cup. The appointment is no quick fix, no, nor sticking plaster. It's part of our long-term planning. So they expect an immediate impact, yet it's no quick fix, no sticking plaster. You Seriously, though, you would have to think that, that this is about the World Cup, isn't it? This is about rewriting this ship before the World Cup, first and foremost. It's about avoiding uh, an embarrassing situation where they go to the World Cup under underperform badly in a group including you know Fiji, Georgia, and that country called Australia, and you know not making you know the knockout stages, which would be an absolute slap in the face. I mean, last time, if you remember, last time Wales went to uh, the World Cup in France, they managed to mess it up uh, and not make it through to, to where they should have done because Fiji knocked them out. And uh, I still have the image in in, in the harbour in Marseille of this massive catamaran with a huge, the biggest Welsh flag you've ever seen in your life, which had been moored there for the knockout games. Unfortunately, Wales weren't there, but the big ship was. And this time, they hope the ship won't have sailed before you reach the sort of last eight or even the semi-finals. Of course, it's going to be difficult for, for Gatland to turn the whole ship round. But I tell you what, uh, I think you've probably got more chance of avoiding an iceberg with him at the helm. 
Also, the Welsh Rugby Union New Zealand Rugby have reached agreement with immediate effect. Uh, so, you know, they've, you know, I don't know whether any money's changed hands or anything or whether they've just agreed. He had he'd never worked for him with the Chiefs. What is, is, is there such a thing as being able to coach down this part of the world and being able to coach up your end of the world? Or is that just like some kind of a myth or I'm making it up? I think it's a case of he knew every single thing about Welsh rugby. He knew every single player. I think going back, having been away for so long, with a massive expectation, which you expect when you have been a three times Lions coach and won four Six Nations titles, three Grand Slams, the Chiefs would rightly expect a magic wand to be uh, you know, shown and, and, well, this is how we win everything. But it didn't happen for him, did it? It just, I'm not sure that it was a great fit for him because operating at international level, absolute control, you know, he, he didn't have to coach every day of the week with Wales. It suited the way he. He was, he, he was used to producing teams, particularly with the Lions. I mean, this is why it's such a good fit now for Wales. You've got a guy who's used to getting players on a short notice period of coaching and preparation to get them ready for a major battle. And that's exactly what this World Cup is turning up uh, into for Wales. And so they've got the best guy who's used to doing that. He's used to firefight. He's used to dealing with uh, not having the players he wants for you know, because the club's holding on to them. And that will be the case now because some of the players you know, are out of the country at the moment. You know, Dan Big is down at Toulon. Yeah, he'll get back because of the 60 cap rule, but he's not playing in Welsh rugby. But you know, he's going to be central to what Gatlin wants to do with Wales. So there are problems. But he, the, th- the key thing is, Mud, he understands his problems. He knows what comes with Welsh uh, rugby. And to a great extent, it's still a basket case, but at least he knows that basket case is already there. I'm not sure that was the case when he rejoined the Chiefs.